Hi, hello. <clears throat> Welcome to the discussions on women matter. Actually, I'm very pleased because here we are in ADAPT, struggling to be a part of you all, struggling to be a part of mainstream society. And so I was very pleased when it was suggested that we will not only have women with disability, we will have all women. So it is actually a brainchild of Sonalini who's sitting here in front and it is Sonalini and Malini and uh, Atu and Swenga. These are the four people who are the brainchild behind this wonderful occasion where we will discuss this. So please put your hands together and let's keep it. I've been asked to talk about uh, my journey and uh, to begin uh, at the beginning. So I just wanted to say that many of you actually know about my story, but uh, basically it's, uh, I didn't know much about disability until uh, my daughter was born. And uh, so it was uh, uh, in Calcutta in uh, 1966. And uh, it was quite interesting, but even the doctors did not know very much. So I, uh, sorry about that. Apologies to my doctor friends. But uh, basically, uh, they said, oh, nothing can be done about it because uh, it's brain damage and it's irreversible. But uh, I guess Calcutta is a bit backward. So uh, <laughs> that's what happened. That's what we were told. And um, this was quite devastating for uh, uh, myself because I was only 23 and my uh, husband was 25. So. Um, the good thing was we didn't accept the doctors and what they said. And so we ran away and uh, we went to England. Um, fortunately, um, my brother-in-law was in a hospital in Cambridge University and was able to set everything up. And um, it was quite interesting because the whole approach was different. And uh, it was uh, also much, I must say, much kinder they spent a lot of time with us. They had much more sensitivity. So you had a different kind of um, treatment of uh, me and Malini. And it was interesting to know that basically um, the mother is always the primary patient. Uh, and it is the mother that has to be rehabilitated first, you know. Or Let's not use the word rehabilitated, but at least it's the mother who has to have the confidence and uh, empowerment. So that stuck in my mind. And in London, of course, I had uh, uh, um, great joy because Malini was uh, assessed as 130 IQ. Maybe it's gone down now, Malini, do you think? But however, <laughs> however, um, that was quite uh, amazing that uh, um, at that time they were able to assess all that. And at the same time, I don't know where he was all this time, he was sitting and waiting um, to show his face. But I also had a wonderful son who was um, here. Nikhil Chip was supposed to be here and was here, but he's disappeared. Poor Natasha, my daughter in law, is here. But, um, uh, he, of course, as you know, is a very good restauranter and very talented and certainly changed our lives as well. But all that was 50 years ago. So I just can't imagine that all that time has gone and uh, Malini herself has uh, become very empowered and she was able to do two masters. I can't believe this, Malini. And... Um, <laughs> One of them was the empowerment of women. I always say she's a bit unempowered, but however, but that's my opinion. But it was gender studies, empowerment of women. And so she did that. Then she did information technology and had a string of jobs. But what she's really happy about now is that she's in uh, Tata Sons and uh, is in Bombay House uh, and 
is doing extremely well there. So she says this is the happiest day of her life when she was given that job. So to go back, uh, uh, when we uh, arrived here in 1971, um, it wasn't uh, that this whole situation was much changed. It was still exactly the same, the medical model and um, and uh, again doctors, you know, uh, not knowing really how to handle the baby. So very brusquely, you know, handling the baby, not without the actual care. And uh, you can have what I've introduced, uh, professionalism and expertise and specialization with care, with compassion. You don't have to really have an aura of uh, professionalism around you. I mean, like that really may sh seem as if you're hopelessly insecure, you know, so you have to have that aura. But uh, that's exactly the opposite of what we've tried to do here. But things had not changed in the Vice Chancellor when Malini went to do her degree, said it's a useless exam. Why do you want to do that? You know, keep her at home. So uh, all along we hear that keep them away you know, tucked away at home. Why? Because society and all of us, you know, it's inconvenient to have people who are different here. So it's a huge, big gap that existed. But uh, the other thing which will shock you is that it was n cerebral palsy had no identity in this country. It was not one of the 11 classifications also uh, in the government. So nobody knew cerebral palsy, multiple health, what does it mean? You know, so there was no identity, CP. So this uh, kind of humongous gap had to be filled. Of course, there were no schools. And um, so the first thing we did, of course, was uh, open a school. And uh, there again, uh, it I mean, you know that it was opened on the 2nd of um, uh, October, Gandhian principles, overlooking the a very idyllic setting, uh, Arabian Sea, we're still there. And um, one of the most important things uh, for everyone to appreciate, I think, is that we are community-based organization. And our principles are really sustainability, charity, and provision of a high quality um, service. Any service that America, Europe, England, that they can offer, we can offer, but to the poorest. So that was the huge big challenge and has been the challenge of 50 years. S but I must say uh, that it is a very unique, uh, um, for want of a better word, uh, in that it took the whole thing away from um, hospital setting to a special school setting where there was so much color and laughter and we introduced socio-emotional development like music, arts and sports and yoga. I hope you, Rekha can hear me and I'm in her good books after that. <laughs> but the most important thing I think is that the whole family came forward to help. And my brother is here, and he's been here ever since. Uh, my niece is here, who did that wonderful film, uh, Margarita with a Straw. And you'll see uh, both her and Kalki in their modest way dancing at the end. Uh, so all members of the family, my sister, who started the Calcutta Spastic, uh, the Delhi Spastic Society, my sister-in-law, who's uh, Shonali's mother, started uh, the Calcutta Spastic Society. My brother-in-law, as you know, is the chairman of the Institutional Review Board. It, yes, it is a family movement, uh, definitely, and it is private. We do not belong to the government. Isn't that a good thing? You should give us a clap for that. <laughs> and, um, but the land itself belongs to the government. And uh, so we've always worked with the government. And uh, actually, the product may be uh, schools, etc., the programs, 
but on a macro level, much of our time has been engaging with government and changing and r reforming uh, government action, not really through advocacy because we are depoliticized. We do not belong to a, any single um, political party. We have not worked really for money or prestige or power, but we have ma worked for the needy and the so. Um, the main thing I want to end by saying, because I was told by Sonalini to keep strictly to five minutes, so I think I've <laughs> passed that, <laughs> is uh, empowerment of women. Uh, you see, in the early days, parents were uh, not taken into the uh, confidence. And uh, so a very leading hospital over here uh, said to me that, oh, don't bother to give the files to them. And I still think that such a medical attitude persists. But what they haven't understood is that majority of your children are the 60 or 80 percent out there with no services being treated as village idiots crawling on their knees. So you are actually definitely dealing with the poor. You are dealing with illiterate. So what do you want to do? Sit in your big offices and you know have white coats and all that and feel great no so the empowerment of women was something i i took up and uh, the first thing i did was reverse this thing about oh don't let them look at files they won't understand because that person had not understood as even the world bank has said that they are the poorest of the poor had not understood that even over the years you will always deal. It's like saying when will, in, uh, when will India become rich or something like that. So you will always be dealing. Uh, the only thing that happened was we made a quantum uh, jump with uh, uh, foreign countries. And that is why you see these wonderful grand buildings that we have. But uh, the majority of the clientele and the stakeholders are people who cannot pay their fees. Now, the first thing I did with them was that I wanted to tell them everything that about their child. So we empowered them. We educated them. We trained them. Then we encouraged them to take positions of power. We encouraged them to be principals and be in the governing body and be trustees, etc. So this was a great help because this then, you won't believe it, created a critical mass of opinion, of knowledge. So it wasn't just uh, activism, it was knowledge. We spread knowledge and then when they got it, like say, when Calcutta got it or Delhi, we left them. So a huge, um, of course, a huge dose of humanism was uh, instilled into the work. But another approach was federalism in a small way. And um, of course, all of them, many of them were better than us. They were more creative. So just after you gave them the technical knowledge, they ran away with it and did their own service. And you'll be happy to know that 29 of the 31 states have got spastic society and the same model that was lit 1972. And it was done by parents. When initially, they were very bewildered. It was a quagmire of grief and sadness and all that. In fact, it, it was quite a tough time for me because if they cried, I cried. You know, so it was very difficult to actually see fathers crying and all that. Uh, but when they stayed for a while and they saw that all there were so many children and all the children were doing very well, uh, they got uh, confident and they became trained and empowered. And then they found that this was an organization that put them right in the forefront. And, um, and that, I think, was the main thing that happened. And I must say, having said all these nasty things about doctors, do forgive me, my d two doctor friends, that it is the doctors who have really made us because they have been with us in this journey. So it is very much a medical and a paramedical uh,
partnership that's happened. And what we are today is really all the uh, support and the nurturing we have got from the doctors here. We've got leading doctors here, Dr. Fernandez, who unfortunately has lost her voice, not corona or whatever, but so I let her go this time. And Dr. Taral Nagda, who's very well known to us and who has a lot of free camps here. And they've, they're with me and they've been with me right throughout. So I'm going to end here just to say that professionalism, yes, but with compassion and care. You want to read about that? There's a book there called The Birth That Ch Changed the Nation. Um, federalism, please, let it go because you're working yeah. for a cause, so you don't have to have that power. Yeah. And transfer leadership. Mm. I'm still trying. You know, I'm on the, still trying about that. So this actually spread regionally. So Jaipur, and, and, and the most important thing I must say that I first used to say I was a professional beggar, but recently I was invited to, um, because of Sunita, um, to talk as a social entrepreneur. So that's quite a current thing that's happening. And I'm very proud that I fit it in, you know, from professional beggar to social entrepreneur. So <laughs> I can only tell you that definitely one has been able to create social capital where you're sitting. And so infrastructure, buildings, that's us. We've done it in Jaipur, we've done Calcutta, Delhi, Chennai, Bangalore. And uh, skilling, man, past skilling the uh, children, the trainees, we've done that. So, yes, I think you may call me that. Um, so I just want to say that people who were dumped before, my parents, are the people who are in the forefront. And I want to say that nearly all of them, all also members of the family and also uh, the parents who came forward, they're happy to work in an anonymous space. They're invisible. But may they never be forgotten. Thank you so much.